Hi, my friend, Sam Vieira here, Redken Global Artistic Ambassador. I have such a cool technique that I want to share with you. Take a look at this one link bob, okay? It looks pretty much one link, doesn't it? But yet, watch when I take my hands to it, watch the movement that I get out of it and the layers that you see in that. There's a video that we did some time back where you all fell in love with it. It's about how do you create seamless layers, invisible layers, on maybe a bob or somebody that has long hair and give them some volume and some movement on the top. So now let's show you another way that you can create that in the top and crown. Let's get started. The section is the most critical part in this. So what we're gonna do is separate our side area from the back area. So we're gonna come through. Now in most cases, I would always separate the side area just over the ear or just behind the ear. Now what we've discovered at Sam Via, the, the transition of that from the horizontal transition to where the comb comes off the, line, off the head is much further back. So we are moving our side area further back and the reason being we've discovered by doing this, it really helps us from when we layer hair or cutting bobs from getting holes behind the ear. So now look at how far back that section goes. That's to the right corner back. We're gonna do the same thing on the opposite side. So notice that we'll set this movement up first in terms of where it's at. Now look how I can take a box directly on top and I can see and visualize where that corner is. Now come through and blouse. And it's gonna happen right at that area. Okay, so once I'm there, let's separate this now. Now this is gonna help me to determine where that diamond is gonna to go to and I'll show you that in a moment, now watch. Once we're here, and I'm just checking my top view to make sure that I'm even on both sides. Remember, distribution of weight is critical from left to right, right to left. So I'm just moving that just slightly forward on my left side. Checking, and I'm correct. All right, now here we go, watch this now. So here's what I, I wanna do. I wanna layer this out. She's saying she wants a little bit of volume in her bob. She's tired of it being one length, but loves the idea of keeping it one length. So we wanna just give her a little bit more movement and a little bit more volume in that top area. So now I'm gonna come through, I'm gonna take a diagonal section. So now where do I take this diagonal section to or how high? Take the comb and just rock that comb. When it comes off, that's the point where I'm gonna to go to. Now watch in the front. What I'm gonna go do in the front area is I'm gonna look and see where's the comb come off when it comes off the hairline. At this point there, now I'm gonna connect these two dots. So now that's my diagonal back. So now you can see how I still have the weight of the bob sitting there. So let's just isolate this for a moment. We're gonna come back to that. Let's go back to the opposite side. We're gonna repeat the same procedure in terms of what we're doing. So once again, just rocking the comb. Where it comes off, I'm just gonna mark that spot. Now I already have a point of reference here. Once we have that point of reference in the front and a point of reference in the back, now it's just a matter of connecting those two dots. Now once I've got that on both sides, now I need to come back and get the triangle in the back. So here's what I'm trying to share with you. I'm letting the head form, the shape of the head, tell me where to sit the height of this diamond section that I'm gonna cut. So I'm not just going there and just drawing a diamond section and saying, okay, this is where I'm gonna place it. Let the head tell you where it wants to go. So now we're gonna determine where does this diamond drop back to the back. So I place my comb, Right we're on top of that crown where it comes off. Now I'm gonna go diagonal back to the center back. And now from here, I continue and connect the dot to the opposite side. Now what we've done is once we release all of this, we've been able to create a diamond section. That is the shape of triangle in the front and a triangle in the back. So if you take a look at a view from the top view, you'll see that I've got corners here and let me just sharpen the corner out for you, okay? And now we go back to the opposite side. I've got a corner here, okay? And I'm just going back through, just sharpening these corners back out, okay? And then from that center back to this opposite corner. Okay, now, here's what I need to do. Now I need to up isolate the underneath. But before I isolate the underneath, because we're going to cut just this area, what we're gonna suggest you do is zigzag this section. So you're gonna get a diffused edge, so it's not gonna be so cappy. So now watch, I'm gonna teach you to get the zigzag section, and I wanna do it just in these two front lines here. So we can see that this is the line. Now watch the comb. I'm gonna comb this back. I saw where my line is. 
Take the wide teeth of the comb, go up and down, 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 up and down. Now just slice, and now I have a zigzag section. We're gonna go back to the opposite side. So we come through opposite side, so you can see I'm not drawing my zigzag section in. I see that diagonal line to that point. I'm gonna take some of that hair with me. Now watch, I just go up and down, up and down over that visual line that I saw. Continue back to that corner. And now just slice your finger where you think that line is. Release and you've got a zigzag section. Now once I have that zigzag section, now we can isolate the underneath. Sectioning is critical I find when I go in and detach these haircuts because this underneath and the top, they will be detached from each other, disconnected. Notice how I've changed the language. Disconnection to detached. I discovered with clients you can really find that disconnection can be very raw and very scary to a client. When I say let's detach an area, let's detach your crown area so we maximize your volume, maximize the movement on top. Now, once I'm here, now it's time for us to come through and cut this. All right, my suggestion would be take from a middle section, work with the middle part. Now start to think about where do you, what kind of angle do you want to create here? So let's take a look at the profile view. Notice a white comb on dark hair. I can see the extension of the line and it really allows me to have some contrast there. So now you need to establish, do I want to create that angle, get it shorter towards the crown, leave it longer in the back. You need to think about this. What do you want that to do? Do I want it shorter in the front, longer towards the back? Really think about that. I'm gonna go shorter in the front, longer towards the back, why? Because when she puts her hand through this, I want this hair to have some movement to it. So think about that in terms of what it wanna do, watch. If I go this direction, I'm actually throwing short to long, that hair is gonna move naturally, have a natural tendency, common tendency to kick forward. I want this to move back and away, so watch. I'm gonna use that back crown area here as a guide. I'm gonna come through and notch into that. Okay, now once I've notched into that, I'm gonna come back through and I'm going to soften that. And I wanna go just slightly shorter. Why, Sam? Because I, remember, I want that angle short to long. So when she swings her hands through it, it's got some movement to it. So you can see I took that front a little shorter, left my length towards the back. Now let's fan. I'm working with a seven inch. Look how deep I'm going into that. I'm going very deep. So let's say that you don't have a seven inch and you have a five, five and a half. So when you want to put your hand deep and that shear won't reach all the way into it because it's so short, bring the guiding blade over your index finger. Now slide down and now close. So you would be working with a short shear this way. So you're much able to go in deeper. I like having an arsenal of tools because I understand that each tool has a specific reason and purpose in terms of how it responds when you use it. Now look how I'm working short too long. Now we're gonna come back to the opposite side and we're gonna do the same thing. So you can see why I've isolated the underneath. That allows me to pick that right back up. Let's give you a profile view. Now I'm gonna come through and I'm gonna take a slice of what I just cut as a guide. That becomes my slice. So Sam, you're elevating everything to the center. Yes, I am, to the center. Notice how I fold that. And I'm dry cutting this because I wanna see how that hair falls immediately. Remember, Dry cutting is a visual exercise for us, the hairdresser. It's not for the client's sake, so that I can see what's my cutting edge as I'm working. So I look for my guide, okay? And once I see my guide, I notch to that. Don't cut a blunt line. It's gonna be much more difficult and time consuming to soften out that bluntness. Now we come through and we're gonna deep point cut. Notice how the, it fans. Look at my index finger and thumb. We fan so we spread that section out. So we're able to really see how much weight we need to take out. Rather than me keeping my hand like this, I visually see there's a lot, you're gonna get overly aggressive and take out way too much weight. Now, once I've done this, now watch, when I release that, now watch how I'm still gonna have the illusion of a one length bob, yet at the same time, when we go through and the wind hits it, or she puts her hands through it, I think this is awesome for fine hair. It doesn't have to be over a bob. You could simply have somebody that has really one length long hair and do this. And what you're doing is you're satisfying them because you're leaving their length alone. But now you've given them some kind of movement. So when they put their hand through that, they've got something happening with their bob. And not only that, but now she can get a little bit more length, excuse me, a little bit more volume in that back area. 
And once again, just going through and understanding how to detach a haircut seamlessly, meaning no lines that you can see through the haircut. So let's recap this. What did we do? We went through and we took a diamond section on the top. Separate your side area from your back area so you can determine how low that diamond section is gonna go. Once you have that diamond section, we're gonna encourage you to come through and take a zigzag part. Notice how I took the zigzag part. I didn't have to draw it in with my comb. I simply combed back. I visualized where that line was. Up and down, up and down, up and down. The comb never left the head. Slice where you want the zigzag and voila, you have a zigzag section. Once we've completed that section on both sides, what's important is what's the angle you're going to cut. So you need to determine, do I want that hair to move back or do I want that hair to move forward or do I want that hair to fall square? So you decide how you want it to fall. That's the way that you're going to cut it. So once again, it's all about making hairdressers better hairdressers and at Samvia, we believe that happens through the process of education. Thanks for watching.